Uh, today's session is going to cover PowerShell on AWS Cloud Shell. So first, a little bit about who I am. I've been with AWS for about seven years. I have a background in uh, support and systems administration. Um, like a lot of folks I know, I worked my way up through Help Desk, uh, managed some systems, and then moved to AWS and slowly got into the development track. So today I specialize in automation and just basically automating any systems that any customer, uh, internal or external, may be interested in making life simpler. Uh, and outside of work, really love um, electronic dance music, so if I'm not behind a computer, you'll probably find me at a nightclub or a festival. So the agenda for today's session, we're going to talk about what AWS Cloud Shell is uh, as a very first starting point. We're going to talk about why you should use it. Um, and then why you should use PowerShell in AWS Cloud Shell. Uh, some updates around the product in general over the last few years. I'm gonna cover lots of demos. There are a few little kind of pitfalls and caveats uh, that are important to know about with Cloud Shell because it is not perfect. And finally, we'll have some time at the end for some questions and hopefully some answers. So first of all, what is AWS Cloud Shell? So it is a browser-based terminal, similar to a lot of the others that we've already seen earlier in the day. Um, and it is native to the AWS console. So it basically just sits in your web browser and lets you type in terminal commands, just like you would inside your local terminal. Um, there are lots of pre-installed tools in there, and we'll get into what a lot of them are, um, but it's Pretty straightforward, same tools that you'd be sim you know, having uh, in, inside your native terminal, uh, uh, whether you're on Linux or Windows or Mac. So also comes with some local storage as well. You get up to one gig of data per region. So there is um, persistent storage. So you can store anything that you might think, a um, little bit of data, text, configs, um, scripts, anything like that that you might want to in there. Um, show of hands, who has used AWS Cloud Shell before? Okay, all right. I like seeing that's, that's a lot of hands. Uh, it's a relatively new product. It came out in 2020, uh, so that's awesome to see so many folks using it. So uh, we'll go on to just a little look at what it looks like in your browser. No big surprises there. Nice terminal uh, just built in there and uh, kind of exactly what you'd expect there. So a few things, why should you use AWS Cloud Shell? And you can kind of think of some of those right off the top of your head. First, it's built in right in your browser. So you don't have to install any software. You don't have to configure anything. You don't have to do anything. You can pretty much use it on any device that has an internet connection and a web browser, which is super cool. So you don't have to worry about what platform you're on, what tools you're using, anything like that built straight into the browser. And the next awesome thing about it is that it comes with pre-configured AWS credentials. So you don't have to worry about exporting access keys, secret keys, and session tokens. You don't have to worry about IAM users or roles. You just log into the AWS console, and whatever credentials you use, whether it's federation, whether it's IAM, anything, straight into the, uh, straight bit, just built into the terminal session that you have right there. And in addition to that, you have tons of pre-installed tools, most notably the AWS CLI, the standard publicly available uh, command line interface um, that a lot of you have probably used before as well, um, built in. Uh, and there's also some other really cool tools built in as well that we'll get into more. PowerShell is one of them. There is PowerShell 7 built in um, right out of the box. And there is the AWS tools for PowerShell modules pre-installed in there as well. So super cool that you get to use that, all of that. You don't have to install any of it locally. You don't even have to open up a terminal window or session or app, anything like that. Uh, also really nice to have is everything in there is automatically updated. Um, who here has ever updated AWS PowerShell modules? Show of hands. Who here has run into some problems updating those modules? Myself included. 
Love to say it's perfect, but it's absolutely not. And so it's really nice to have all of those pre-installed, pre-updated, ready to go. You don't have to worry about updating anything like that. And as new updates come out, they're available in the tool pretty quickly. Uh, also, as I mentioned before, you get persistent storage, uh, one gig per region. So not a ton, but enough to store what you think you might need, whether it's config, whether it's moving data around from S3 uh, to and from, which we'll show in some demos later, um, and pretty much anything else that you can think of. And that persists between sessions, which is the key. So it's not ephemeral, it is persistent storage. Um, also, you can customize all of this to your heart's content, same as you would with any other terminal. If you want to install a uh, terminal uh, customization tool, like you know, oh my bash or oh my ZSH, anything like that, any of the PowerShell customization ter uh, tools for terminals, you can install in there too. Basically anything that you could do with a normal session, you can customize it uh, right in AWS Cloud Shell as well. It's pretty flexible, pretty much just like a normal standard terminal tool. Uh, it's also a consistent environment. You can jump on any machine that you have and you don't have to worry about what's there. So it's always gonna be exactly the same regardless of whether you're using a different machine or whether you're interacting with somebody else who's using a different machine. If you're both using AWS Cloud Shell, it's gonna be the same across the board, unless of course you've customized it in some way, but on the ground, it's exactly the same as you go through it. And most importantly, it's free. There's no cost for the, for the data storage, there's no cost for basically anything that you can do with Cloud Shell other than what costs you might incur with the AWS resources that you're managing, of course. But Cloud Shell itself is free. So next, why should you use PowerShell in AWS Cloud Shell? So we covered why Cloud Shell is awesome. Why use PowerShell? Well, we're kind of covering some stuff that we already know here because we all know and love PowerShell, but we'll go over it a little bit. It's built in uh, to AWS Cloud Shell. You don't have to install it. You don't have to update it. You don't have to you know, download any source code packages, anything like that. It's built in right out of the box. That wasn't always the case when Cloud Shell first launched. So it's been added in the last few years, which is awesome. A huge improvement to be able to choose what you'd like to use, whether you want to use a standard terminal, which is Bash, or if you want to use PowerShell, or anything else for that matter. Uh, another key here is all of the AWS PowerShell modules are included. So we've talked about who has updated modules, who is using the slightly newer uh, over the last couple of years, the modular AWS PowerShell modules. Who is still using the monolithic? Okay, so we have a little bit of both. So um, for those who aren't familiar, um, AWS offers two varieties of the PowerShell modules. There's one monolithic that's very large and includes all of the commandlets that AWS offers. There's a newer variant that's modular by AWS service. So there's one for EC2, there's one for S3. And there's tons of advantages to this. Um, and we can go into those in a little bit more detail um, kind of as we go throughout here. But the main advantages are they're smaller, they're more modular, they allow you to only use what you need, they import a lot more quickly, and everything executes a lot more quickly when you pick which ones you want instead of having everything available. And with, the, uh, with PowerShell in Cloud Shell, all of them are available in the newer, faster, modular variants. So that's what you get out of the box there. And like we all know and love in PowerShell, discoverability is awesome. It's really just not an intuitive experience to discover what commands you can run and what their syntax is in outside of PowerShell, really. You can, you can do it, but it's so standard in PowerShell that it just, I've never found anything easier. So it's super easy to discover commands, help, formatting, syntax, all of that stuff in PowerShell. Same as you would in any other PowerShell session, but it's nice to have in this environment as well. You can also use your existing scripts. So who here has written a PowerShell script that interacts with AWS in any way? Most of the people in this room, you can use those right in this terminal. You don't have to worry about credentials, configuration, which modules are installed, anything like that. And you can get them to and from Cloud Shell very quickly and easily 
you can choose to use S3, or there's a built-in upload download feature in the browser as well, so you don't even have to worry about S3 if you don't want to. And then finally, familiarity. We all know and love PowerShell, and we're familiar with it, we're strong with it, we can work with it quickly. We don't wanna learn something else if we don't have to, that slows us down. And so being able to use what we already know is super awesome. Uh, okay. And over the last few years, there have been some really cool updates to Cloud Shell, and I'll just do a quick touch on some of them here. Uh, first, there is the console toolbar, which is a feature that basically, you've probably seen if you've been in the AWS console recently, um, you kind of see a little screenshot of it up there on the screen. So just in the bottom of every AWS console window now, there is a little button that you can click on. It says Cloud Shell, and it will pop up in the current page, Cloud Shell itself. So you don't have to navigate to a separate interface or window if you don't want to. You still can, that's still an option, but it's more accessible now than it ever has been before. So you don't have to leave the current page that you're on to interact with Cloud Shell as well. Um, also, as I touched on briefly, there are the new modular variants of the AWS PowerShell modules, which is a huge quality of life improvement um, for anybody who's used both and has experienced the uh, performance differences. And uh, shameless self-promotion plug, I'll be doing a lightning demo on the performance differences between those two uh, during the lightning demo session. So check that out uh, if you're interested at all. And finally, for those who are in this space, Cloud Shell this year has become HIPAA eligible or compliant. Uh, so that can be a big deal for those of you who have to deal with those types of requirements. So um, I'll go ahead and uh, pause real quick. Do we have any questions so far? All right, that's what I like to hear. So uh, we're going to get to the fun part. Uh, we're gonna do a ton of different demos here. And so I'm gonna try to cover as many of them as I can. Um, and if you do have any questions as we go, let me know, just go ahead and stop me, raise your hand, um, whatever you like. So um, I've got my nice little list of demos here. Um, is that readable to everyone in the room? Okay, cool. All right, if that changes, let me know. Um, I think I've got everything zoomed in pretty nicely here. So, okay, this is the standard landing page for AWS. Um, so if you just log into any AWS account, this is what you're going to see. So um, as we kind of covered, there are a few different ways to access Cloud Shell. So down in the bottom here is the um, new toolbar version of it. And since I've got it so zoomed in, it's kind of gonna cover the whole thing. But you can imagine if it's nice and zoomed out, you get to see all the rest of the page that you're on. So. Super nice and cool uh, to be able to access it that way if you like or the other way if you prefer. So I'm gonna go ahead and close out of this and go to the full version so I can get that covering my whole page. Uh, and it'll open up a little splash that'll let you know that it's got all the awesome pre-installed tools we already talked about, uh, the gig of storage, and the fact that it is persistent in your uh, little home directory there as well. So. Go ahead and close out of that, but wanted to let everybody see that to start. So is this, I don't know how readable this is gonna be. It's gonna, it's a little tough to zoom in on this here because it's built into the browser window itself. So let's see if I can maybe zoom in a little bit more. Okay, is that more or less readable to everyone in here? Okay, cool, all right. So we will go ahead and jump right into the demo. So I'm gonna be kind of um, going back and forth between these two windows. Hopefully that's not too jarring, but uh, we'll go ahead and we will start just in the regular Cloud Shell before jumping into PowerShell. We'll just list everything that is available by default in Cloud Shell out of the box. So obviously we will start of course with the AWS CLI, standard tool that most of you have probably used. And we also have the awesome completer feature of the AWS CLI. If anybody's used that, it makes using the AWS CLI a lot easier. You can tab complete lots of different parameters and input and things like that. Um, we've got the uh, CloudFormation linting tool. I'll just kind of pop, uh, just kind of mention a few of these kind of as we go through. You can probably recognize a lot of these, Docker tools. Um, there are um, tools for the Elastic Container Service. 
um, some Git tools, some JSON tools, some Kubernetes tools as well. So a lot of the stuff that you'd be familiar with and would work with on a daily basis if you have any connection with AWS and some stuff that doesn't involve AWS at all. It's Kubernetes, you don't have to use AWS to use Kubernetes. You can choose to use whatever you like and the same with uh, these JSON tools and things like that. Um, and there's tons of other tools built in, but these are kind of the ones that are added on beyond just the scope of the regular, um, you know, kind of built in uh, Linux command tools. So we will jump over to my first super fun part, which is the built in AWS CLI showing us the credentials that were configured. So you saw I dropped right into this terminal and this is exactly what I am dropped into. So this call, for those of you who aren't familiar with AWS, is to the simple token service, which just shows me what my current IAM role is, uh, which is just the access management within AWS. So this shows you that I didn't configure this ahead of time. I didn't do anything to make this happen. This is just available right out of the box. I don't have to configure my terminal with any credentials or federation or anything like that. Just got into this account and got that straight out of the box. So that's really cool if you've ever had to deal with any you know, federation or terminal configuration for AWS, especially if you manage multiple accounts, multiple roles, it can be really painful. It's really nice to be able to just get this right in your terminal by default. So we'll go ahead and jump down to a nice easy, uh, I'll go ahead and clear these out every time we go through so we can see these a little bit easier. So we'll do something pretty simple that uh, most of you who have worked with AWS have done before, and that's just a quick command to list out the EC2 instances that I have in my account. And I set up a couple just for demo purposes so we would have some output here, but for those not familiar with AWS, EC2 instances are virtual machines running on the AWS cloud. So nothing particularly fancy or crazy here. It gives the standard AWS CLI output but just showing that that's all built in, ready to go, configurations are already pre-configured and everything like that. So uh, really cool to have that available out of the box. And that's of course nothing specific to PowerShell, but what we will show here is kind of a nice way that we can build on things as we go. So that output was a little bit difficult to read, but what if we do something like piping it to JQ? So it makes it a lot easier to read and it's just an example of one of the tools built into Cloud Shell. So really nice to have that out of the box. And of course, if any of you are familiar with using that JQ tool, you can use that to parse and change all of the JSON input that you uh, take. You can pick specific properties and fields. Won't get into that tool um, in too much detail, but it's really helpful to have it built in for anything JSON related. So that's really nice to have. So let's go to our next. So for those of you who deal with the AWS CDK, that's something that we can install in this terminal with just one command and it will persist, thankfully, throughout the uh, entirety of the lifespan of basically this whole account. You don't, your home directory isn't wiped or anything like that. Um, unless you choose to, that's an option that you can have, but this will be available the next time I get into this terminal, as long as it's within this account and region. So really nice to be able to have that, but again, kind of another demo of just, it's a normal terminal, it's a normal shell, it's nothing that's, uh, that's strange or weird. So you can pretty much use it like you would any other. So uh, that was just an example of AWS CDK, um, which is, um, AWS's uh, infrastructure as code um, abstraction for those of you who aren't familiar. Did I hear a question? Okay. Thought I did for a moment. Okay. Yes, please. Um, so, as far as the persistent setting and storage, if you're impersonating roles, is your account more accountability? So, the question was if you are impersonating different roles in different accounts, is the home directory specific to each one of those? And my answer is I don't know what, where the differentiation happens. So I believe if it is the same role that you are sharing the home directory, but I believe if it's a different role, I believe that it is a different 
home directory, but we're gonna talk about some ways later on in the demos to alleviate that. Because if you're dealing with tons of AWS accounts and tons of different roles, you can see how that could get really painful really fast. I'm assuming that's why your question was, was asked in the first place, right? So yeah, it would just be really a question of kind of, because each environment's different and there's so many different ways that you can gain access to AWS accounts, whether it's through federation or different SSO services or things like that. And I don't know all the specifics of how the differentiation occurs. That answer your question enough? Yeah. Okay. And I'm happy to, to, to discuss that after uh, the fact as well, if we want to dig into that a little bit. In fact, I'd love to know more details about what that is, because obviously we're in one account in one role with one home directory, and that's cool, but what happens when you change to another one? So we could definitely get into that a little bit more. So uh, just uh, a quick run of the CDK that we just installed, just to show the version. Uh, nothing super specific to this command, but just showing that this is a command that works with something we just installed. We didn't have to do anything unusual um, with it. So just to show that that is working. Um, so uh, next up, let's show the built-in binaries available. So we showed the extra tools like the AWS CLI that was added on. So we're not gonna be able to see too many of these, but these are gonna be your mostly standard Linux binary tools your grep, your kill, um, your diff, uh, some other things like that. You'll see a lot that you recognize here, but it's a really nice, easy way to show that this is just like any other Linux terminal and has a lot of the same tools that you would be uh, uh, accustomed to. Uh, under the hood, this is running Amazon Linux, if anybody's used that. So it's gonna be super similar to anything that you're used to running that runs on Amazon Linux. So you're really just gaining access to uh, something like that. So. Uh, that will hopefully help any of you who have uh, used this or will use this. But now we will get to the fun stuff. Uh, we will just drop into a PowerShell session. And that's all I had to do to get into PowerShell. There was no installation, there was no downloading, there was nothing. Um, and in the past, it was not that simple, but now we have it built in uh, to Cloud Shell, which is just super easy. You don't have to worry about what version of PowerShell is running on your local system. As I know a lot of us maintain both Windows PowerShell and PowerShell 7, which is awesome, but a little bit painful sometimes. So it's really nice to just have that available for you right out of the box. So we'll do the same demo that we did earlier, but we'll do it running with the PowerShell version of the tool. So we'll run the um, get STS caller identity function. And what this will do once the modules load into memory is show the exact same output that we got before that our session is having credentials that we did not have to pre-configure. So it's showing what account ID I'm in and what, um, what role I am in as. So just to show that that's a one-to-one, -one, that we don't have to do anything special or different with PowerShell in order to do that. Uh, so next up, let's go ahead and show what modules we have available. Um, just using a standard um, get module list available. Uh, that most of us have probably run, and you saw that that was quite a long list. And most of us don't use most of these modules and services on a daily basis or at all, because AWS has too many services for even AWS employees to keep up with. Um, if anybody at AWS tells you that they know every single one, I would uh, question them. Uh, and so there's quite a few, but what's nice is that you don't have to worry about which ones are installed, which ones aren't installed. I've personally run into this so many times on my own different machines and environments where I'm trying to interact with something in AWS and oh no, I don't have that module installed and I need to go install it. It's all available here out of the box running the latest version available at the time of publishing. So really, really cool to be able to have that all out of the box. And there's of course a few core built-in PowerShell modules from Microsoft as well. The archive, the host, the management, security utility, you have some package management, uh, PowerShell Git, PS read line, uh, and so on. And one thing that I don't think that I mentioned is that we also do get the um, uh, IntelliSense, uh, or not the IntelliSense, the, uh, the autocomplete, the, um, uh, the prediction um, that we had demoed earlier in the uh, session. So if we start typing get, we'll see the last thing that I typed. You don't have to configure that. Uh, hopefully most of us in our local PowerShell environments have configured that because that's one of the most helpful things that I've had in a while. And it's gonna be the same as anything else where you just write arrow to complete the rest of it 
and don't have to worry about that. So really cool that that is available right out of the box. Uh, any questions so far? Okay, let's take a look at what other commands we have available specifically rather than looking at the modules. So this is, of course, going to spit out a great big long list because it's going to display every single command that's available in every single one of those modules that we just showed. So hopefully it will scroll through pretty quickly, but you can see there's a lot. So everything that you could ever possibly want from an AWS perspective is gonna be there right out of the box with no configuration, no installation, no updates, no nothing. So really nice to have that right out of the box. And another cool thing that we can do here is we can just do standard PowerShell commandlets as well. So get dash variable will show everything that's built into this session. So we've got, for example, uh, all of your standard um, PowerShell variables. You've got some specific to AWS, like the AWS history one. Uh, we've got all of the normal confirm preferences and your error preferences. Uh, you can see where the home directory is which is where you get to store all of your files. That's where you have your one gig of storage. But you can configure all of these any way that you like, and they should persist throughout your sessions specific to this role, account, and region. So, and there is, of course, also a PowerShell profile that you can change. We'll get into that a little bit later. And mostly standard PowerShell stuff in here, but shows that it is a normal standard PowerShell environment. Um, and you can manipulate it and conf uh, configure it, customize it in any way that you like without having to worry about which terminal or machine you're in, which is super cool. Uh, so uh, another cool discovery thing that you can do in here is list out the environment variables as well. So this is the same as you would be able to do in a normal um, PowerShell session, but there are some specific AWS environment variables in here, like what region we're in. So in this case, I've set everything up in US East 1, um, and that shows here. It shows the execution environment is Cloud Shell. So you can query that. If you have anything specific to Cloud Shell in a script, you can check if it's running in Cloud Shell really easily. And you don't have to worry about whether or not there's any differences in the environment unless you want to. Uh, also, another way to check your home directory as well. Um, different uh, customizations in terms of colors and encoding and things like that. Um, and then it also does show that there is a standard bash shell available as well, which is what we were in by default and shows what user, which by default is gonna be the Cloud Shell user. Uh, so I'll go ahead and clear that out. Uh, so we will also go ahead and show, which we did see earlier, what the profile looks like. So it's exactly what you would expect. It's just in a standard default path. You can, of course, change that. You'll have to make sure to apply that to whatever sessions you want, if you like. We'll get into a little bit more of that as we go along in the demos here. So um, that is where the profile is stored. Now, let's see what's in it. It is not a particularly complicated profile by default, but we get automatic completion for basically everything, which is really cool, out of the box by default. And then we also set the rendering to plain text so that we don't have any funky browser formatting, color issues, or anything like that. You can obviously customize that if you like. If you have any of the PowerShell um, terminal customization uh, tools, I forget what some of the publicly available ones are out of the box, but you guys probably know them and use them and love them, you can use those here. They might have a little bit of quirks with browser formatting and rendering and things like that, but try them, see what happens. And yeah, it might just totally work right out of the box. Uh, so what we're gonna get into a little bit here though is we're going to uh, customize the profile. So I'm going to just add a little bit of customization to the profile as an example and what do we think is gonna happen when I reload this profile? Anybody have any thoughts on what we might see? Hello Summit is gonna be correct. So nothing crazy going on here, but I'll reload it and that obviously re-executed all of the code that we saw in the profile earlier and Hello Summit as an example. But 
use your imagination and you can add whatever you want, same as a normal standard PowerShell profile. But we are gonna get even cooler. Uh, so we already did the reload the uh, profile, but let's go ahead and start with some other cool things that we might wanna do here too. Um, let's go ahead and clear this out. Go ahead and set the PS gallery as trusted. As you know, by default in PowerShell uh, globally, it's not trusted. So I just wanted to do that to save myself a prompt later. Uh, one of the modules that is not available by default is Pester. Um, who here uses Pester? Pretty much everybody, that is awesome to see. So you might imagine that it could be useful to have Pester in Cloud Shell and we can install it just like anything else. And we'll go ahead and just, just for a good measure, I'll say a list available, name, Pester. And now we have the latest version of Pester installed, just like you would expect. Um, so what we're gonna go ahead and do here is I have a little script. I don't think that I have it on here yet. So we'll do a quick little demo of how do I get files to and from Cloud Shell. Right in the browser, you can do if you like. So we'll go ahead and upload files. So what I should be able to do here is and that mapping has changed, so let's go to it the hard way. Right. Okay, so we'll go ahead and upload that. And exactly like you'd expect, the upload was successful. And what we'll do is we'll run a git content on it and we'll say pester demo. So um, what we are gonna check here is whether or not some S3 buckets exist. And I'm gonna go ahead and run this and see what output we get. And it should run like any other standard script in this case. And hopefully the demo gods will cooperate and we'll see how it goes. Okay, perfect. So it's exactly the output that we would expect. Um, so neither of these buckets exist yet. So it's gonna show that they don't exist. But if you use your imagination and expand on this a little bit, there are some really cool things that you can test um, with Pester that don't involve code at all. You can check your infra in AWS if you wanna check whether certain things exist or are configured in a way that you like in the tool that you already know, which is Pester, instead of trying to learn or create some other solution for it somewhere else. So I found this to be a really cool way to, um, to leverage uh, Cloud Shell. Uh, so what we can do here, though, is, um, let's see, yeah. So what we can do, though, is we can um, modify our profile to automatically install Pester if we want. So what I'll do here is I'll go ahead and add that. And I will show that as well. So pretty straightforward, we have our same old hello summit from before, but also I've added a line that if Pester is not installed, let's go ahead and install it. And I added the dash for so that we don't have any conf uh, confirmation prompts or anything like that, but you can keep that if you like. Um, so what we'll do is I'll go ahead and uninstall Pester so that we can actually do a proper demo of this. And then once this is done, we will reload the profile and it will say, hello summit. And you saw real quick, a flash that Pester is installed again. So pretty standard profile customizations, but really nice because you can do the exact same thing within Cloud Shell if you like. So let's start getting into some, a little bit more AWS specific stuff here. So what we'll do is I'm gonna create a S3 bucket, uh, which for those who aren't familiar with AWS, it's object storage. Um, so 
It can pretty much store anything, and it is anything that you don't need block level storage for. So um, S3 is pretty versatile, but what we just did there is created uh, a bucket with the name PowerShell 2023 Summit. Um, so we're just gonna use that um, for a little example. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna write that profile that we had earlier up to that S3 bucket. So what we should be able to do, I'll go ahead and just so we can show that it's there. And we see that it's there, so let's go ahead and download it and load it all in one line. So I'll kind of leave this up on the screen here for a moment so you can read it since this is a little bit longer. But what this command does is this will download that file from S3 that we just uploaded. And assuming that's successful, this double ampersand will allow a reload of the profile using standard dot sourcing. So nothing particularly crazy about that, but you can kind of see where this is going if you start storing your profile somewhere else like S3. And then you can start keeping a standard profile for yourself or others if you like, and you can customize it any way that you want. Uh, so um, some other examples that we'll go ahead and do here and we'll get into, we'll get back to some of that profile customization a little bit later, but I wanted to show some other AWS specific examples for anybody who administers AWS and wants to know what can I do with AWS with this. So this one is a pretty quick and dirty example, looping from one to 300. And let's say I wanted to create 300 S3 buckets. With the console, that would take forever. With Cloud Shell, it's super easy. I tossed on the what if at the end here so that I don't actually create those buckets. I would have to go clean them up later, which would be pretty straightforward, but we get the idea. We know what what if does, we know what this operation would succeed. So pretty cool that we can create those en masse if we want. Do the same with any other AWS commandlet, um, EC2 instances if you wanna launch a bunch of them, things like that. There are of course other ways to do that as well, but just, um, just, to kinda, just some ideas and examples to, to get your, your brain thinking here. So here is one that is a really great example here. So um, for those of you who use EC2 on a regular basis, um, it's backed by block storage. And we have a few different types of block storage. GP2 is our general purpose version two storage. Um, in the last few years, we've come out with an updated version of that called GP3. Um, higher performance um, and lower cost, uh, essentially. And there are um, console-based ways where you can click around and you can modify volumes to change from GP2 to GP3. What if you wanted to do that in a more automated fashion? So if you wanted to go to your account and say, I wanna update all of my GP2 volumes to GP3. So you can run that command, and since I don't have any that are GP2 in here, it's not gonna show anything. But I think you get the idea that if you had any GP2 volumes in there, they would update to GP3 and show a nice little output of that. Um, show of hands, has anybody done a conversion of any GP2 to GP3 volumes? Okay, so I see at least, at least a couple hands. So um, it, 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 they, exactly. They, they, so take a lot of time, and they absolutely do, and they're a little bit painful to go through on a manual basis, so it's really nice to be able to just pop into Cloud Shell and do this right out of the box, no configuration. You could get, you could get into your AWS account, click into Cloud Shell, and have this running probably in less than 90 seconds from end to end, so that's a really, really fast, quick way to do things like that, and it can, the scope can broaden to anything in AWS that you wanna do on mass. There's no reason that you can't do it in a local terminal or through other you know, through other automations or things like that. It's just really convenient to be able to drop in to a session where everything is there, nothing needs to be installed. So this is where we start to get really cool. So this is a little snippet, and I'll give everyone a moment to kind of read what this does here. But I'll try and walk through it as well. So the idea behind this little uh, command snippet is syncing the command history. So we're all familiar with the 
on the PS read line option to predict what commands based on our history we want to run. Those are just stored in a file. So what we can do if we want is we can actually continually upload or re-upload that file to somewhere like S3. So I haven't tested this command, so we'll see if this actually works at all. But I think we will probably get the idea. Um, one nice thing about Cloud Shell is that if you do have multi-line code, by default, it does warn you so that you're not just going out to the internet and pasting in whatever chat GPT tells you to run. Um, you get a little warning. So uh, really nice to be able to do that. So I, it looks like I haven't actually um, uploaded this yet, but I think we um, get the idea here. So the idea is you would read down the history that you had stored in S3. You would append that to the default location for that history, and then that loads into PowerShell already, and it would then have access to everything that you put up there already. So you could think of this as just, if you wanted to do this across accounts, across regions, across different environments and things like that, you would then have access to all of the commands that you've ever run, regardless of account, regardless of session, regardless of all of those types of things. Uh, so I think that is the last demo that I have. So we have just a few minutes left. Uh, let's open it up for questions. So the question is, is there a way to paste the code in where it doesn't execute line by line? And the answer is kind of. The best answer I could think of to do that would be using the backtick, um, where it would, uh, where you're basically having multiple lines of code, but they're extended across using that backtick. Uh, so that's the best way I can think of to, to do that. But um, there's nothing that says that you can't have scripts stored anywhere, whether they're local or in S3 or whatever, and you just throw them into Cloud Shell, um, whether you upload them through the browser or download them from S3, and then you can run it that way, which would end up being one line, however many lines you have in that script. Does that make sense? Okay. Any other questions? So the question is, is uh, are there any integrations with Cloud Shell with other tools? And the answer is not that I know of. I thought the same thing too, and then I kind of got caught in a recursive thought pattern that a big benefit of Cloud Shell is that you don't have to use any other tools to get to it. Um, so it kind of sort of defeats the purpose. I like the idea where you're dropped into this pre-existing environment, but there's nothing that I'm aware of that does that. Um, but there's also nothing that says that you can't build something that might leverage a web browser with a session um, and go from there. So uh, you could do it. Um, and especially if you had some built-in tooling or, or existing tooling to perform your, you know, your federation or your things like that. So there's nothing that I know of, but maybe someday. I don't know. Any other questions? Uh, the question is, since the file system's persistent, what happens if you wipe the root directory? Uh, I have no idea. I'm guessing it can go completely haywire because you do have pseudo permissions, uh, super user permissions in this shell. So by default, the user that I'm running as, um, so I'll go ahead and clear this out here. And of course, I just got timed out of my account, so I'll go ahead and not worry about that. But um, you absolutely can pseudo into it. And by default, you're running as a regular user as you normally would in a terminal. But I'm sure you can wreak absolute havoc. Uh, with it. It's your own self-contained environment, so there's nothing that you can do that would realistically affect anything else unless you started running crazy AWS commands, but nah. Uh, what you can do is um, you can delete the, your Cloud Shell environment completely, and it'll then get rebuilt. So if you ever do muck it up completely, it's as easy as just rebuilding it. So super quick and easy. So the, uh, the question is, is there any way to work around the issue that I just ran into with the uh, credentials timing out? And the answer is nothing built in. Um, so, but you can use your imagination because it is a standard shell session. So there's nothing that says you can't run VS Code Server in here. There's nothing that says that you can't uh, you know, tunnel out of this environment into something else. I don't know what else you might run into as far as persistence and timeouts and things like that because it's not meant to run forever. 
Uh, question is, is there a VS Code extension to hook in? The answer is yes, but there is no integration with Cloud Shell that I'm aware of. There's a publicly available AWS VS Code extension that allows you to configure and interact with AWS resources and things like that, and it just runs actually really nicely. Um, in fact, I can probably show it here. Real quick. I don't have it installed in this VS Code, but it's built into VS Code really nice uh, in the toolbar and stuff like that. So uh, it looks like my little uh, attempt here at getting back into the account and showing. But it actually, it even reloads uh, the previous commands that you have if you want. So you can basically just uh, go up. Actually, I might be able to do it. I know we're like one minute over, but we'll see if we can get into it real quick. Uh, just as a quick example. So I'll go back into Cloud Shell and it should resume right where I left off. It's gonna show me the standard boilerplate, but right back where we left off. So. Pretty cool way to end. So uh, with that, uh, I will say thanks everyone for coming.